Hi guys, good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi teacher. Hello. I'm sorry. Good evening, guys. Hi teacher. Perdona, Emora. I'm so sorry. Um, I am sick, and I have been in, you know, going back and forth with the medicines. I had to take a medicine. I'm sorry that it took me longer than expected. Okay. <laughs> But are you okay, teacher? Uh, mm, what happens is that uh, I have been sick for more than a week, and um, the doctor is treating me like if I have COVID because uh, the symptoms. I yesterday I was throwing up. I have headaches. I I have fever, and I have been like this for many days. So I have a lot. Like you can see, I have like a lot of pills here that I have to drink and <clears throat> but I feel but it's okay don't worry I feel better now but I, I had to run to take my medicine between one class and another and come back for the class and I'm sorry if I took more minutes but we're going to replace a minute at the end of the class okay so yeah I don't know if it's COVID or not the medicine is for COVID but I don't know if it's because I, my taste, my smell, my bones, I am throwing up. I, I feel very, very sleepy. So I don't know if it's COVID or not. So take care of yourselves, okay? Drink a lot of uh, vitamin C, drink a lot of vitamins, and that will help you stay safe. Okay, so today we're going to be doing... Um, ton, 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 ton. I'm, I'm going to start with a fun activity because I want to review will and going to, but I want to start with something super fun, okay? So I want you to write down on your notebooks, we're going to learn vocabulary today, but I want you to uh, write on your notebooks or on a piece of paper <clears throat> from 1 to 20. 1 to 20, mm -hmm. and you're going to learn new vocabulary, okay, from 1 to 10, and now, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for this video, this video is in Spanish slash English, because she, he is English, and she is Spanish, so, but the idea of the video are the words that we're going to be learning, okay, so they are going to give you words in Spanish, and you're going to translate those words in Spanish into English. Those are called collocations, okay? Let's do the first one together. Just pay attention to the video. Tell me if you listen to the video, please. Pero, misteriosamente, le has conseguido entender. Hmm. En este video vamos a aprender 20 collocations que todos los supermotivated students deben conocer. You will find them and many more in our amazing, brilliant, terrific, fabulous, superb book. Born to speak British. Madre mía, este hombre no tiene abuela. What on earth are the collocations? Las collocations son grupos de palabras que normalmente van juntas en inglés. Y no es porque sigan ninguna regla en concreto, sino porque así se han usado a lo largo del tiempo y es esa la combinación que suena más natural a los nativos. So, collocations are words that there are two words, but together means something, okay? Can you listen to the video? Okay, yeah, loud, okay. Yes. okay per perfect. Okay, so the idea yeah. is for you to not translate literalmente al inglés. It's for you to have an idea of they have a different word in English, okay? And they mean something else. For example, let's find out. No cualquier otra. All right then, students, have you got your pen and your paper? Okay, I want you to write one to 20 on your... Okay, in a paper, remember one to 20 because we're going to learn them. So I want you to write them in Spanish and then what you think the word is in English. I'll give you time for, for you to do that. Piece of paper and let's begin. Number one, how do you write agua dulce in English? Mm -hmm. Write your answer down now. Agua dulce, write it down. How do you say agua dulce in English? Write it down. Don't tell me. <laughs> no sweet water. 
No. <laughs> no sweet water. That's you see, that's translation. That is translation. Why not, from, teacher? <laughs> from, uh -huh, not sweet water, Mao. No. Let's find out. <laughs> this is the easy form. <laughs> what do you think? Hmm. No cheating, your under exam conditions. Si has escrito sweet water, I'm afraid that's the wrong. Right, Mr. Bartlett, ¿cómo se dice agua dulce en inglés? En inglés decimos agua fresca, fresh water. Aha, uh -huh. like when you go to the beach, you go to salt water. When you go to the lake or to a swimming pool or to a river, you call it fresh water. So not sweet water. Como sweet bread, como pan dulce, no, right? So it's the same. So fresh water is agua dulce for rivers, for, for swimming pools, for lakes, etc. Okay? Okay. Salt water and fresh water. That's so rivers one. in English, they carry fresh water. Yes. If you got the right answer, go and eat a biscuit. Give yourself a tick. Give yourself a, yeah. tick. Give yourself a smiley. Yeah, that's better. If you got it wrong, give yourself a cross. Okay, mm. we're going to be counting your score as we go along. Good. Okay, number two. Ojo morado. Hmm. You know when they punch you in the face and you have uh and they and then you have a uh, ojo morado how do you say ojo morado let's find out not purple eye purple eye that's super that's that's super chain it's like translating no okay no ojo morado no change let's find out <laughs> Yo creo que ya te has imaginado que no se dice purple eye. No. En inglés se dice ojo negro, a black, black eye. eye. Black eye. So that's what you call it. Oh, yeah, I have a black eye. I, I was in a fight yesterday. So that's what you call it, a black eye. A new word for you? Are they new words for you? Yeah? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. For me. It is. It is. Okay, super. Great. That's the idea. New information for you. Okay. Let's go with our next one. Number three. What's this? Oh, I thought it was a bit smelly in here. Es un diente de ajo. Mr. Ballet loves adding plenty of garlic and then my breath stinks. Your breath stinks anyway. No, it doesn't. Ok, diente de ajo. Escribe tu respuesta. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? <risa> Esperamos. Que garlic. No, teeth, not garlic too. No, not garlic too. No. No. What do you think it is? Huh? This is a new word and you will learn it. Let's find out. Caído en la trampa. Yes, es garlic tooth. Garlic tooth. Of course In not. In that case, ch ch a clove. A clove of garlic. A clove of garlic. A clove. So you, for me. Uh -huh, clove. So if you look for it, even, even, so the parts of the garlic are called cloves. Mm -hmm. Cloves. Sorry, okay. teacher, what is the meaning of clove? Um, how do you call it? Um, like uh is have you seen let me show you no hold on no let me show you a picture mm. all the pieces hold on no in the plant because usually it can come it's like a space right it's like every part like this is a plant but every okay. part of the plant is called a club. This part. Mm. And in garlic, in garlic, it's called every dientito. 
but it's it's uh, not diente. It's not the translation is not diente. It's just like el segmento, la parte del ajo, o la parte de una planta. Okay. It's the club, like the leaves. They are club. Yeah. Okay. Because you could use it with plants. You can use clubs with plants too. Okay. Thanks. See. Okay. I like understand. this. Uh -huh. Like every segment or every part in a plant, that's a club. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And also clubs are called clavitos for cooking. Yes. Clavitos de olor, those are clubs too. So it all depends on the context. But for plants, is every part of the plant. For garlic, is los dientes de ajo. For uh, cooking, son clavitos de olor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So please. Okay, super. Let's go. So now it's a new word for you. That's good to hear. Clove of garlic. Let's find out. Our next one. Of garlic. A clove of garlic. Number four. Lluvia fuerte. Lluvia fuerte. A, str a, a strong rain. <laughs> <laughs> Strong rain. <laughs> Strong rain. Uh, rain. It's raining hard. Raining hard. Nadia, Nadia. Aha, let's find out. Rain's not strong in English. No. We say lluvia <laughs> pesada. Heavy rain. So not strong rain. Heavy. It's heavy rain. Heavy so it's rain. It's raining, like, you know, it's been raining heavy lately. So, ha, a lot of rain, heavy. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. And it's true because it, it hurts, right? Like, it's, it hurts you. So, it's, that's why it's called heavy. Because you feel like... Huh? Heavy, heavy rain. rain. We are expecting heavy rain today. So, take your raincoat. Number five, mentira piadosa. Mentira piadosa. How do you say that? I think you know this one because in Spanish we use it very much. We don't say mentira piadosa. We say una mentira. Can you guess? I don't know. Una mentirita blanca. Yeah. White light. Exactly. Mm, liar. Ex uh -huh, a, a white lie, a white lie. Si has prestado atención al diálogo, esta ya la sabes. Este es un punto regalado. Find out. Not a good lie. In English we say, una mentira blanca, a white lie. So you call it a white lie. Uh -huh. mm. Hi, that was a white lie. Mm -hmm. Like a mentira piadosa. So we relate it to church, to white, to... Purity, so that's why you call it white lie. <clears throat> okay. Let's go with the next. Everybody tells white lies from time to time. Okay, number six. Viejo verde. <gasps> Ooh, how do you say viejo verde? <laughs> viejo verde in English? Verde. Not a green man, no. <laughs> Or a green old man, no. Like, do you know what a viejo verde is, right? Sugar daddy? <laughs> <laughs> but not like a sugar daddy. That's something else. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out. Si has escrito a green old man, no. La gente en inglés no puede ser verde. No. Sorry. No, I wouldn't understand yeah. what you meant by that. If you what said about the green? green man, there's a green man oh, over green? there. I, I think you're talking about an alien or oh, something. Hold. Oh, hold. In inglés, simplemente, a dirty old man. Dirty old man. But then again, this dirty is British. Dirty old man. <clears throat> this is British. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> That's British. Now, but man. there's something you can there's, say. Don't go in that pub. It's full of dirty old men. <laughs> For example, 
Sin embargo, en inglés sí que se pueden tener dedos verdes. Do you know what it means? Oh, If yes. you have green... Now, in English, you people who have green fingers is when we say in Spanish, tiene buenas manos, like to plant, to cut someone's hair, to, you know, like when you say tiene buenas manos, you say in English, it has green fingers. Mm -hmm. New word, right, too? So, do you have green yeah. fingers for plants, for example, if I ask you? Do you have green Me, no. plants? No, Rudy? No. Yes, no. I have. Yes. Uh -huh. In my case, no. No? Jose? Mauricio? No. <laughs> no, in my case, no, teacher. <laughs> no. But are you good, like, for example, cutting someone's hair? Like, have you ever cut someone's hair? No. Okay. Oh, it's no. no? Okay. Good green fingers for cooking. Green fingers for doing something. No. no? <gasps> for cooking, no. For cooking, uh -huh. Marushan. <laughs> yes. Only sandwich. Okay. <laughs> Only Maruchan. Okay. Let's find out. Let's go with our next one. In fingers, what does it mean? Hmm. It means that you're very good at gardening. Like me, I have very green fingers. All our plants are there. Come on, Mr. Ballet. Number seven. Un fuerte aplauso. Para los estudiantes. Un fuerte aplauso. How do you say Espera, un fuerte aplauso? How do you say that? Try to write it down. Heavy clap. Demos mm. mm. un fuerte aplauso and people do even this. Like, what is it? Have you noticed when people clap uh, and they say, and they say, Ten un fuerte aplauso. Uh -huh, but clap. that's a fuerte, but fuerte they mean like a, a very long one, extensive one. It's called a round of applause because this is round. Like wow. you take so long that you make a circle. Give a round of applause. And then you're like there for like five minutes doing it. Let's find out. Strong applause. Doesn't sound right in English. We would say to give a big round of applause. Now, people ask me, and this is, I have seen this in another class, but say, but the song, I play a song for my kids. I say, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You know, clap is this. This is to clap when you do it once. Okay. So, aplaudir, just once in English is called clap. But if you want to say una ovación de aplausos, you would say a big round. Applause. So, clap is like, guys, clap. Okay, so it's like once or twice. It's or only once. Uh, once or twice. That's why the songs for kids, like they say, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. It's just once or twice. But if you if you want to make an ovation for someone uh, for a very long time, you take a big round of applause. It's the time, the time that you take to do it. Round mm. of applause. Yeah. You can buy a round of drinks, round. and you can give someone a big round of applause in English. Kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Next one. Juego de mesa. Oh, that's a good. That's one. a good one. How do you say juego de mesa? Puzzle. I'm sorry? Puzzle? No. Mm, puzzle is a no. type like a cruci. Yeah, it's part of, but it's like Jenga or Monopoly. That's a type of game. But like all of them, like in general, there's two words. I'm going to show you two words today. How do you say mesa? Table. How do you Table. say juego? Table. Table game. Okay. Table game. How do you say 
Pizarra no. o tablero. Board games. Very yeah. good. So we have two. I'm going to explain. We have two. We have board games, but we have table games. What is the difference? Table game is like ping pong. It's like, ah, like ping pong, like a pool, for example, that's a table game because it's on a table. But board games board. is like Monopoly, like the puzzles, like Jenga. So there's like two types mm -hmm. of, so it all depends, right? Let me show you an image here. Just for you to have an idea. So um, these are board games, okay? These are board games, this one's it. But this one, like poker, that's a table game, not a board game. Because it's on, you play poker on a table or on a casino. But for example, you played Monopoly or you played Jenga or you play Uno on a board. So those are called board games. These are board games, see? All of this. Oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. e table games are poker. Ha, like this one, see? These are table games that are mounted on a table. Like pool or arcade, for example, arcade also ha, are, are table games. All of these are table games. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. New words? So, do you have in your house board games or do you have table games? Board games. Board mm -hmm. games. Board oh, yeah. games. Uh -huh. yeah. But maybe somebody say, well, I have a table game. I have un billar. I have a pool. Or like a futbolito or a hockey or like this hockey. I don't know. That's a, that's a table game. Board game is similar to table the tableros. Mm -hmm. Board. Es que board is tablero. And table, yeah, it's juego de mesa. But we call them in Spanish juegos de mesa. But it's because we put them on a table. It's because we put them on a table. But actually in English, table games are games that are there that you cannot move them like hockey and poker. Or even pool. We would say a board game, although table games do exist, but I think of poker and casino games. These are mm. table games. Or maybe uh, table football, Okay. table tennis, but we're talking about board games. Mm. Ajedrez, como se dice? Chess. Chess. Bueno, tiene sentido porque a board es una tabla. Una tabla is a board. So. Yes. Board game. Yeah, makes sense. ¿Y cómo se dice, Isabel? Tabla de surf. Ooh, that's a surfboard. A surfboard, not a surf table. <laughs> Pero nadie diría eso, hombre. Oye, no te pases. Ni I've te heard it. Eh? I've heard it many times. Really? Yes. In the first picture, we can see a man who is surfing on oh, a table. Yeah. <laughs> Esta es la típica imagen de los exámenes, ¿no? Del examen del first. <laughs> yes. Number nine, very common in Spain, un día festivo. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. Now, this one, uh -huh, I'm going to explain both because this is British. So I'm going to explain you how do you say it in English, in American English too, okay? Okay, it's not a party day. It's not a festive day. It is unas vacaciones del banco. Yes. ¿Por qué? Porque los bancos cierran en festivo. It's all very logical. A bank holiday. Okay, in the UK and in Europe, they call it, we call it holidays, whether it's New Year's, Thanksgiving, I don't know, you call it holidays. But in the UK, it makes sense, I know, because usually for holidays, the banks are not open, right? They're always closed. So they call it a bank holiday. <laughs> Bank holiday. That's how they call it in, in, in Europe. 
and in the UK. So that's when you listen to a bank holiday. What? What are they celebrating? No, it's just that. It's yes, it's like, confused. <laughs> you will get confused. Like, what are you talking about? But in this case, it refers <laughs> to any holiday, Christmas and Thanksgiving and etc. But it's just referring to the fact that the banks close. So in the U.S., holidays, but in the U.K., a bank holiday. Interesting. When's the next bank holiday? I need a, I need a holiday. When's the next bank holiday, for example? Y también es muy común decir, ¿no? Cuando hay puente que coincide con el fin de semana, ¿no? Se dice, we have a bank holiday weekend. Yes. This week holiday. we have a bank holiday weekend. Yes. A festive day, you could say a festive day, but if you say a festive day. Ahora bien, a festive day is different. It's un día festivo. For example, eh, your birthday could be a festive day. Teacher's day, like today, is a festive day. Or, or if, like if there's a festival, like festivales, you could also say a festive day. But it's different. It's in a different context. Hey. I think of Christmas. Mm -hmm. So if you say to, tomorrow is a festive day, then it must be Christmas Eve or yeah. Christmas Day. Number 10. Muy fácil. Hijo único. Ooh, muy fácil. Excuse me. This is a tough one. Right. Good luck, student. How do you say hijo único? Mm. Only child. Mm. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, what are you trying to The maybe. only one. <laughs> only one. <laughs> Let's find out. ¿Quién en casa ha escrito a unique son or a unique daughter? If you say she is a unique child, I think that she has some kind of unique talent. If you, if you wrote unique, Unique means único, but in, in, in quality. It's like, oh, he is unique. He's so unique. Like, if he sure. has a specific characteristic, that's like yeah. única, it's a specie, for example, that's unique. So it's to, it's to describe something in particular and very specific. So it's not correct because we are all different. So you cannot say you're a unique son. Let's find out. Another point to has. say in here. I'm sorry? In another say no, in another form to say inhale. Inhale. Uh -huh. Ah, inhale. Okay, yeah. It's mm, no. Because in that case it would be different. You are talking about a different context. Mm -hmm. You cannot say for only child, you would there's a there's a word. Let's find out. And I'll I'll explain. Huh? Something physically unique about about her. Un hijo único. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? We would say an only child. Very good for those of you who said only child. Who said only child? Raise your hand. Yes, I do. Yay. So it's, it's actually an only child. Now, talking about inherit, that means um, whenever there is an herencia. Okay, you would say an inherit, like like Masi was saying. So in that case, yes, you would use it, but for for legal terms. For example, I am an only child. Wow! I'm not that example. Where did you get that from? Very creative. <laughs> We've got ten more to go, Mr. Ballet. Come on! Okay, the next collocations contain verbs and nouns, okay? So, number 11. Hacer un examen. Mm, okay, Espera, talking about this one, English. Can you understand? Talking about hacer un examen, it's different in the US than in the UK. I'm gonna explain why, okay? But how do you say hacer un examen? Doing I get this. Make a test. As a teacher, as a teacher, I make a test because I created for you, for example. 
I create the content of the exam. I make it. But in your case, you... No, no, no. It's que the verb make is like to prepare. It's more like... Do a quiz. It's doing. Doing a test. So the action... Doing a quiz. Doing... Very good. There. Take. Take an exam. So you take an exam or you take a test. Now, what is the difference? Take a quiz or take an exam. What is the difference between an exam and a test? Test mm. is, um, is, for example, something right, right? An exam, for example, oral exam is the action. I, I don't know. But. Igual, and also the same, this, this explanation will also go with when you go to the doctor. Do you take exams oh. or do you take tests? I'll explain. Exam? Exam with is the for doctor. medical purpose. Mm -hmm. And test is for the students, uh, something academic. Mm -hmm. So which is, for example, TOEFL, TOEFL, TOEIC, eh, Bolton, CASAS, IELTS, eh, all those are exams or are tests? Are exam? Are of tests? I'm trying to find the answer that I found the other day. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, a quiz, we know it's a short test, right? It's just to check on how you're doing if you're understanding topic by topic, just to give you an example. A test, it's something that I can create. And it's my, I created it and I share it with many students. But an exam, it's something standardized. For example, La Paz is an exam, not a test. Because it's standardized, used all around El Salvador. Now, only here, local. But, for example, TOEFL, TOEI, eh, IELTS, eh, CASAS, Bolton, any other exam that you might think of, it's considered an exam. It's a standardized eh, test, per se, okay? But it's an exam. So if it's standardized, si pesa muchísimo, it's an it's an exam. If it's at a different level, it's more like a test. And then at a very, very short, it's a quiz. Okay. Okay. So now it's clear. When when you go to the doctor, <clears throat> the doctor leaves you many exams. But each one is a test. For example, the blood is a test or the urine is a test. So exam is the whole package. And tests, individual, if it's urine, if it's blood, if it's, you know. <clears throat> yeah? So de manera individual are called tests. El test de azúcar, test de la orina, et cetera. Those are tests. But the doctor leaves you a whole package of exams. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. the whole package is exams, but individually they're called tests for the doctor. Okay, so it's different. The context is different. Okay, let's go back to our co-location. Wow, almost time. But let's, we're gonna finish, don't worry. Quien ha escrito to make an exam? Oh, 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 Just delete it. Delete it from your head, okay? Delete it from your brain. Erase it. In English, you don't make an exam. Now, in the United States, you will always say, take an exam. You take an exam. But in the UK, this is what you will say. Ever. What can you do? You take an exam or you sit an exam. Now, sit an exam is British. Take an exam is American. Okay? Sit an exam. 
sit es sentarse, you would say. Se senta en un examen. Yeah, it's very formal. Uh, so, for example, this summer I have to sit some important exam. They call them sit because the time, remember when you took bias? How many hours were you sitting down? 15 minutes. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever, like 20 hours sitting down taking bias. I mean, it's a very long period of time. So if, if that exam is very, very long, so you sit an exam, okay? Sit an exam is the first time that I... Number 12, poner That's la really mesa. Ah. Aha, poner la ah. mesa, not put the table. <laughs> poner la mesa is not put the table because you don't put the table, you don't put it there. The table is already there. What do you do with the table? Take a table. Take a table. Mm, no, because you don't take it. You don't move it. You make, arreglarla. Make a table? Make no, a table. Porque no eres carpintero. You're not a carpenter. Okay. You're not making it. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. It's confused. <laughs> so what do you do? Think of Same organizing. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh -huh. So set you may, maybe Ooh, set the table. table. Maybe set the table, arrange the table, maybe, let's find out. Do a table. Maybe set the table. Can you put the table? <laughs> Burn the table. <laughs> that doesn't sound correct to me. Where do you want me to put the table? You want me to move the table to another room? No, it's fine, it's fine. Leave it there. I mean, put the, the, the cutlery, the plates, the glasses, the, yes. the food. The food would be good if you put it on the table. In English, we say to set the table. Very good, Jose, to set the table. So, the table. You, you set the table is arreglar la mesa, no poner la mesa, because poner is literally put the table somewhere. So, you set the table, right? The dishes, the individuals, etc. Now, how do you say um, when you finish eating and you want to put everything back to where it was? <laughs> So you set the table and then ooh, you finish eating and then what do you do? Let's find out. So for example, can you help me set the table? Do you help set the table at home or do you just go to your room and then you turn up when the food's ready? Hmm. I always help set the table and clear the table. Clear the table. You set the table and then you clear the table. So you clear, do you help in your house to set the table and clear the table, guys? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, yeah. And wash the dishes too? Yeah. 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 Always. A lot of dishes. You love to wash dishes? You love? Some days. That's good, that's good, that's good. A lot Only of people when my mother do... punish me. <laughs> A lot of people do not like to wash dishes. Number 13. A <laughs> it's a good therapy. How do you say hacer una presentación? Make the presentation. If you do a presentation. It, if, you, if you create it. Uh -huh. Do a presentation, doing maybe? A pre doing a presentation. Maybe. Let's find out. Sure. Si has escrito make a presentation, forget about it. Pero, buenas noticias. Hay varias. You can make a presentation if you are creating the content of the presentation to present it. Yeah, if you are working on the slides and doing all the fonts and all the pictures. Yes, you are making it. Like if you are creating it, if you are editing it, then you're making it. But if you are presenting, let's find out. Tres posibilidades. You can give a presentation or you can. So, but when you are presenting, so you give a presentation. It's like, ladies and gentlemen, okay, I'm going to give a presentation on nanotechnology, okay? Da -da -da, so, no. so you give a presentation. Make is to create. Okay, and give is to 
do the presentation in that moment, to act. Give mm -hmm. a presentation. You can do a presentation as well. Can you? I don't know. I think some people say do a presentation. Mm -hmm. But Pero lo más común es to give a presentation. A give a presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you can say. Yeah, because if you say do a presentation, it's very Spanish. Like if you were translating to English. So give a presentation sounds more like if you were speaking in English than translating. So it's better to keep it as give a presentation, okay? You give a presentation um, at the university, etc. When you were at school. Give a presentation or do a presentation. Next month, I'll be giving a presentation at Amigos Ingleses headquarters. Ooh. Number 14. Dirigir un negocio en inglés. Mm. Mm. Difficult one. How do you say dirigir un negocio? Manage your business. Mm -hmm, maybe if you were like a supervisor, but manage is more like to supervise. But if you are the owner of a company and you lead a business, I'm sorry, like leader, leader, lead, lead a business, maybe that's a good one. Mm -hmm. We're going to run a business. That's the word. What did you get? No se dice to direct a business. ¿Cómo se dice? We say to run a business. To run a business. Como correr un negocio. Yeah, but it's in English is run a business. I'm, I'm running my own business, for example. In, I don't know. Choco bananos or mangoneadas, like Rudy, just to give you an example. But that's to run it when you have your own business. When you have your own business, you run your business because you are the owner, you administer, you do all, everything. In the businessman, it's a hombre de negocios. Uh huh, yes, the businessman, a business person. Mm -hmm. That's it. Number 15, poner la alarma. Oh. And don't snooze. Poner la alarma, Think. not put the alarm there. Set the alarm. Put is not a good word. So what do you do? It's on, on it, set, alarm. set the alarm. Excellent, set it's the similar, alarm. It's, it, it's similar to set the table. It's similar to set the table, very good. Uh huh. Very good, very good, yeah. Set, set the alarm. Don't say put the alarm. We don't put the alarm. Set the alarm. Yes. I set the alarm at 5 a.m. every day, or I set the alarm at, and then you set the alarm. Mm -hmm. Not to put the alarm. In Spanish, it's poner. That's why we use put, but it's actually not the right translation. Set the alarm. Tomorrow, we have a busy, busy day, so... What time are you planning to set your alarm? I'm going to set my alarm for 10 o'clock. Mm. Seriously? Half past nine. <laughs> Number 16, hacer una fiesta. <gasps> hacer una fiesta. Ooh. I'm sure you know this one. How do you call that? How do you say that? Make a party. Make a party, hmm, okay. Maybe if you are the ones doing everything, uh -huh. have a party, if, have a party, maybe, uh huh. Create a party, no? create a party, okay. In English, if it all depends if you have a big party or just a couple of friends, I'll give you the one for the big party. If you have a big party, like a big quinceanera party, or a big wedding, or a big anniversary party, I don't know something big with all your family etc that is called throw a party throw a party because you're planning the event so that's why you call it throw a party in english it's a you're you're hosting a big old event now to have a an a party or 
<clears throat> just with a couple of friends, etc., has a different name. Let's find out. You don't make parties. What do you do? We have parties or tiramos fiestas to throw a party. So have a party. When you say I'm going to have a party is just a couple of friends in your house, discreet. Okay, like just a couple. But throw a party, it's a big event. Okay. And and have a party is just a couple of friends. So that's a difference. So you know the magnitude. Five, six friends, have a party. 50 friends, you throw a party. Or 20 friends, more. To have a party or to throw a party. For example, it's my birthday next weekend and I want to throw a huge party and everyone is invited. Oh, great. Party. <laughs> to throw a party. Eso es un poquito informal, ¿vale? Entonces esa la reservamos para los amigos. Are you still there? Yeah, are you still no, alive? No, I think gone. No, don't go. Yeah. Okay, 17, come on, hurry up. Number 17, tener razón. Ooh. Tener razón. Tener razón, how do you say that? Right. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Right, right. Yeah, right. Mm. I right. Be right, I think. Be right to, okay. I am right. Let's find out. Siempre That's a tengo tricky razón. one. I always have reason. Not have reason. No, no. I am always right to be right. Very good. Be right. Uh huh. Not to have reason. Because that's like translating, have, tener, razón, reason. So no, it's to be right. To be right. And number 18, pillar la indirecta. You know what that is? Catch. Uh -huh. Catch. Like when, in your case, like when girls like you or when guys like you and you're like, uh-huh, and they say things and you're like, And say comment and, and you're like, oh, is it with me? So what are you doing? Okay. Let's find out. Catch. Fire. Get. The indirect. No, eso suena fatal. ¿Cómo se dice? Piar la indirecta to take the hint. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. because it's like a pista. Hint is pista. So I didn't take the hint. Okay, no caché esa indirecta, like in Spanish. I didn't take the hint. So to take the hint, it's to give an indirect to someone. It's in British too, by the way. To take the hint. For example, Isabel, you make really nice cakes. They're Thank the you. Best cakes I've ever tried. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. So great that the fridge is full of ingredients that you need to make a cake. Yeah. Maybe we can make one for your birthday. Look, Isabel, take the hint. I'm saying let's bake a cake. Okay. Sorry, I didn't take the hint. And number 19, quedarse okay. sordo. <laughs> How do you say quedarse sordo? How do you say sordo? Is this a new word for you? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, let's find out. Igual has escrito to turn, turn deaf. Pardon? To turn deaf. Hello. Pardon? Que como se dice quedarse sordo en inglés? <laughs> quedarse sordo en inglés. To go deaf. So you say to go deaf. Let me take this away from you for you to see. Uh -huh. Deaf is sordo. So deaf is just, hey, are you deaf? Is that sordo? If you're asking. But if you're losing that, you're like to go deaf. That means sordera. Deaf. Go deaf. Irse sordo. Irse sordo. Irse calvo. To go bald. 
So whenever you, uh -huh, also I was going to mention that whenever you say eh, irse ciego, for example, go blind, go bold, calvo, go deaf, okay? So that's how you say it. Go deaf, go bold, and go blind. Let me write it here. So you have it. To go blind or is a loco? To go crazy? Uh, let me write it. Go blind, go deaf, go bold, pelon, go crazy. Teacher, mm -hmm. um, um, go. Ah, I'm sorry, I forget the the word. Ah, to go to no to go cold. Quedarse helado. Quedarse helado. Uh huh. To go cold. Um, that's a good one. Let's find out. I don't think so, but let me find out. Will we go freeze? No. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sounds weird. <laughs> mm -mm. You can say go cold like if you were talking about things, but I don't think that people can be go cold. But for things, you could use it. Go hot and cold. For example, you could go hot, go cold. But if you're talking about things, but I don't think that you could use it for people though. I don't think so. But I can find out. I'm, I can look for it, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you can, or go freeze, for example. Mm -hmm. No. Is that go? It's like to turn. You know, it's como convertirse en. It's like to turn into something. Like, so when you start losing sight, for example, you start losing your hair. So you go blind, you go bald, you go deaf, you go. You could say, I go old, for example. You could say that. I'm going old. So it's like when you're turning old. You could say that too. Mm -hmm. But I can find out about go cold and go freezing. Crazy. To go crazy, to go mad. I want to get 20 out of 20. Number 20, pedir un deseo. How do you say pedir un deseo? Can I get wish? Ask or a wish? May I wish? Make is hacer. Uh, wish. Pero pedirlo. Get a wish. Pray for a wish. Okay. May I wish? Ask. ask. I heard ask for a wish. Ask. Very good. Ask for a wish. Uh -huh. ¿Qué se dice en inglés antes de soplar las velas? Ask for a wish? No. No. No, no, no. In English we say make a wish. Make, no. make a wish. Mm -hmm. But. But in English, you can also say, ask for a wish. Ask a wish. Yeah, you could say, it's acceptable. But British uh, say, make a wish. So Americans would say more, ask a for a wish. Make a wish, uh-huh. Make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish. Mm. <gasps> <gasps> Woo! Wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna stop there. So guys, I hope that for this session of collocations, you learned many collocate 20, right? We have 20 new ones that I want you to start using in the way you speak English, okay? So I think it's, it's necessary that you start using the vocabulary that you learn, okay? So tomorrow we're gonna practice a little bit more with the future. Now, I have a question for you. I want you to pick for, for Wednesday, tomorrow's Tuesday, yeah, for Wednesday, I want you to pick a topic. I was thinking verbs, but I want you to pick a topic before because on Thursday we're gonna be doing the review. I'm sorry, the final, uh, the final exam on the platform. But I want you to think for Thursday 
uh, for Wednesday, I'm sorry, a topic that you would like for us to go over. Do you have in mind any topic they would say, you know what, I want us to go over this topic. I was thinking verbs, irregular verbs or any type of verbs. But if you have a topic que les gustaría que repasáramos on, on Wednesday, text me or let me know on the group. Or if you have it right now in mind, tell me. Okay, teacher. Go, mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. If you have a topic, let me know because I want I want I want us to practice a topic that you like. So it's going to be a free topic for Wednesday. Okay. Think of a topic que le gustaría repasar that you would like to go over that you feel. I was thinking verbs because it's always very difficult to to go over verbs. Mm -hmm. But you tell me if you have a topic in mind. Okay. Yes, it's a good idea. Verbs. verbs is a good one. Okay, super. But if you guys yes, have any other one, mm -hmm. super. Okay, so I'm going to come up with a cool activity so we can do it on Wednesday, okay? So tomorrow we're going to be doing ING. I'm sorry, a future with will and going to. And then, and if you have another topic, well, tell me and we can go over it, okay? Okay, okay. Super. Good night. Thank you guys for joining in today. I, I'm sorry for, <laughs> for my delay, okay? I'm so super sorry. Yeah, it's okay. No okay, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Happy See you day, tomorrow. Teacher. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.